into the things of God. We need to believe God like never before. We need to listen and receive and, and consume. Not just hear with our ears and in our mind, but consume the word of God and allow it to go down into our heart and bring transformation, growth, Come on. healing. Uh, this is uh, God is he's raising up a people that are going to get radical, that are all in, that are sold out, that, are, that aren't being tossed back and forth and Come in on. and out. And this is where it happens. Faith comes yes. by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue in the atmosphere of worship. Um, and, and if you'd like to give, the offering box is here. This is an opportunity to, to invest in the kingdom of God. Yes. We're so fortunate. We're so blessed to be able to, we have literally truckloads of stuff. We had yes. to buy a storage unit. We had to yes. get a storage unit. Yes. Yes. We had storage of stuff, of food, of goods, of, of home set, all kinds of stuff that are coming in because we've shown ourselves faithful to God. Come on, yes. right? Yes. And he Thank knows you. our heart. And so we've gotten more than we're able to contain. Now, I don't know about you, but that's called overflow. Come yeah. on. Yeah. We're able to bless more lives. And this offering, boss, is, is, isn't to take something from you. It's, it's to bless the kingdom of God. Amen. Yeah. So if you want to give to the greatest cause on earth, Love the offering you. box is here. Yeah. If you're able to, let's stand to our feet and just... Usher in and enter into the presence of God. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Where's the microphone? The microphone? No. Oh, it's right there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many, um, how many of you are blessed by this fast that's 21 years old? How many of you saw some breakthrough? Yes. How many of you saw some yes. unexpected things? Yes. How many of you were met with the presence of God? Yes. I feel led in my spirit to say that there are some of you who have questioned if you should stop your fast. And the Lord is saying that he has not permitted you to stop your fast. Yes. Okay. If you're questioning it, if you should, I'm letting you know right now that the Lord is not allowing you to stop your fast yet. He wants you to press in. He yeah. wants you to seek him more. So I hope that that answers something for you. Confirmation. Amen. Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, it's about pressing in. Like Pastor Mike yes, was saying, does. we really have to press in, but there's something There's something more that he has for you. Okay, so I want you to know that your prayer was answered. He wants you to continue. He has not released you yet. Amen. Okay? Thank Amen. You. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. I praise you and I give you glory, Father God. You are worthy to be praised, Father. Holy are you, Father.
bless your holy name, Father God. I give you glory. I give you glory, Father. Holy are you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. I praise you and I give you glory, Father. I give you glory, Father.
surrender it all. And you're going to watch him manifest himself in your life and yes. your circumstances. Amen. 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 He's just asking for your surrender, your complete trust yes. in him. Not, not what's going on around you. Amen. Hallelujah, Father. I thank you, Jesus. I praise you and I give you glory, God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. He's asking you to surrender it all to him today. Give it to him. Let it go.
refreshes and restores us. Strengthen us to renew our minds and strengthen our hearts.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Come on, let's give him a big hand. Yeah. Yeah. He is great and worthy to be praised. Do you realize that our praise is a weapon? Yeah. Do you realize that, that the demons cannot stand when we praise God? Do you realize that it, it, it brings the power of God, the presence of God, the glory of God, and the light of God into any dark situation? Begin to release at this time. Thank you, Lily. You're so awesome. Thank you for... We have some amazing youth here. And uh, God has just been so good. We can defeat the enemy with the, our voice, with our wholehearted praise. Amen? Does that sound weird? No. Nope. I need the microphone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are sick. That's right. Nope. I, heard, I love that. You got to, nope. That's not weird at all. I, I know that to be true. That is a fact. We, we, we know this. We've seen this. Yes. We know in Second Chronicles that in King Jehoshaphat, they were met with insurmountable odds. And the, through their praise and their worship, the Bible says that it confused the enemy. Yeah. That, that they actually destroyed themselves. It makes the kingdom of darkness implode upon itself. When we, when we, no matter what the situation is, no matter what we've been through or, or what we're experiencing at this moment, that we understand that there's an eternity, that there's something bigger at stake, just like Minister Dina said. Thank you, honey. There's something bigger at stake. And we have to realize that, that what we're going through right now in this moment, there's something larger going taking place. That, that there might have been an abuse, or it might have been an offense, or it might have been a discouragement, or it might have been a sickness. And God's saying that there's something so much more important in this temporary moment. I'm more interested in your character than I am with your comfort. I'm trying to develop something inside of you that's going to last you and not only be able to supply you, but make you a source to help other people. That not just temporary, not just physical things, not just hand somebody some money, but give somebody hope Amen. when they're feeling hopeless. Give somebody life when they're feeling suicidal. Amen. Give somebody acceptance when all they've ever known was rejection. Those things are eternal properties, qualities that God wants to bring inside of us. The Bible says in Corinthians that you've been comforted. He's comforted you so that you might be able to comfort others in the same comfort that you've received. Amen. Now he's saying, I don't want to just help you for the moment. I want to make you a source of it. Amen. There's something bigger than this moment. Yes. I want to teach you something. I want to show you things about me and about yourself that maybe you never even realized were there. Why? Because the enemy's doing everything he can to keep us in the dark. And Jesus said, I have come to be a light in this world. God, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you uh, for bringing us here today. God, everything that was meant to defeat and destroy us has failed. We're here today, hearing your word, in your presence. Tuning in even, Lord God. I, I thank you for everyone here and everyone that's going to hear this message. And I ask God that, that our, not just our minds, but our hearts will be open. Prepare us, God. Prepare us to receive on good soil everything that you have for us here today. God, I thank you for the fellowship of the saints. That God, we're a body. We need each other. We're here for each other. To learn, to grow, and to bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I'm excited. I'm so excited. In John 12, 46, I have come into the world as a light so that no one, so that no one who believes in me should remain in darkness. I lived my life in darkness completely ignorant of who God actually created me to be. I was born into it. Rejection, disappointment, abuse, all these different things, all these other factors were at play. Trying to keep me in a position 
where I was unable to see and know the light of God that was, was there accessible for me and was even there responsible for me. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Spiritual warfare. This might not be what you think. We're going to continue this, though, because how many know we, we need to be a, a radical body of Christ? Yes, we need we to do. have some, yes, some right. tools, some equipping. And how many know the first thing the enemy wants to do is to mess up your identity? Take you out. So we're going to be talking about identity today, and that's a huge part of our warfare. Because we get deceived into thinking that, that we're weak or we're broken or we're victims. And we need to understand that we have, if we're children of God, we have the Spirit of God living inside of us. And we should identify ourselves as children of God, as royalty, as sons and daughters, part of a family, the family, the strongest force in this universe ever in eternity. And so when I begin to see myself, it changes the way not only I see my, my purpose and my identity, but also how I see opposition, how I see difficulties, how I face challenges. I'm not hoping or trying to just get by. I'm not fighting for victory. I'm fighting from victory. Amen? Amen. It changes everything. There's a battle being waged all around us right now that without spiritual discernment, you can become a casualty. An all out assault looking to capture the souls, which is our heart and our minds and our emotions, of people who are created in the image of God. We were created to reflect His goodness and His glory here in this world. Everything that's going on around us is an attempt to try to distract us off of our primary function and our God-given identity. Yes. Everything that you've, uh, every negative thing that you've experienced in your life is trying to pull you into a, a false identity, a false awareness, keep you in the dark, ignorant of what's inside of you if you're a child of God. If you're not a child of God, I would love to talk to you after service. It's not anything bad. We will want to just introduce you to the one who created you. Amen. We want to introduce you. We want to have you, give you that introduction to the one who created you, who always loved you, who, who, who's there for you, and wants to see you rise up. There is no condemnation when it comes to God. That's another tactic of the enemy. We're going to talk about that in a minute. <coughs> oh, I'm <let's> see. <laughs> I love babies. He's acknowledging you. All right? 2020 was a year of exposure, of light and darkness, of kingdoms and dominions and governing forces. Children of light are kingdom citizens and under the dominion and protection of the ruling authority of the one true king. What, what, what do you can we really believe that? Yes. When we're faced with a financial burden, when we're faced with, we need to get this, especially right now, with everything that's going on, we have to be rooted in this. This has to be a what one more because in the days and the weeks ahead, I wish I could tell you. And I hear people say, "Oh, I can't wait till things get back to normal." Uh -huh. <laughs> We need to adapt to be kingdom-minded. Yes, Not even a political party. The other day we were here, we were praying and worshiping, and was this atmosphere was so thick, and I, got, I saw this, God showed me this vision, and it was the people coming up off the, the ground. And it wasn't going up to heaven. It was, it, was, it was, I saw people, I didn't see specific faces, but it was the church, the church, it was, it was symbolizing the church. And they were disconnecting from the floor. They were physically lifting up. And that's what we need to do right now. We need to disconnect from the things of this world. Amen. The things that we're used to find our stability in, well, whatever it is. Jesus did this time and time again to the rich young ruler. What did he say? Sell your goods. 
to Nicodemus who had all the all the everything in order as far as religious uh, uh, systems and everything in the word. He said you had to be born again. He, he knew exactly what, what needed to happen for them to disconnect with the worldly things and connect with the kingdom things. He repeatedly talked about the kingdom of God is life. The kingdom of God is life. The kingdom of God is life. He said, I need you to unplug from what you're used to and begin to conceive and grab a hold of where I come from. What's actually more real than anything you can see, touch, taste, or feel. I need you to get your mind, begin to be able to wrap your mind and get it in your heart that this is not where, that this is not the end. Amen. When we leave here, when my body breathes its last breath, it's not the end. It's actually just the beginning. Amen. I'm going to be in eternity. I'm, gonna be, I'm not worried about stacking up my chips here. I want eternity, eternal glory, eternal blessings. I want to be a source of eternal things. Not just rich so I can buy people off. Everybody ever seen that? In families, and buy kids, and this and that. And it's all physical. It's all, what did Solomon say? Vanity, vanity. But God wants to bring, Jesus came, he ushered in this brand new perspective, this brand new way of thinking. And it was brand new only to us, to them. But it's actually more real than anything else. <clears throat> if you have your Bibles, turn to John 1. I'm going to put you in the spot, on the spot and see who's got the Bibles to do it. Or my next time. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were created through Him, and without Him, nothing was made that was made. That situation, that thing that, 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 that keeps you up at night, God's above it. That circumstance that you're faced with, you don't know what you're going to do, God knows exactly what to do. The thing that causes us our greatest fear, God's above it. And when we're tapped into that, when we're, when we're seeking and pressing into Him, it's like, like we said in the beginning of the service, this is not the time to play games. This is the time to get real, real with God. You know what, Craig? I hope one of these days we come in here and the worship and people are just laid out all over the state. I had a, a, a major leader in my life that left such a great impression. And, and, and he actually laid on the altar during worship and fell asleep. And this was a mighty man of God, a powerful man of God. And I was so close to him. And he, he showed me that this isn't about a bunch of religion. This isn't about an intellectual going to classes. This is about getting to know God on a personal level and loving Him and feeling so comfortable in who He is and who He made you to be. And when you're in His presence, you're like a baby sitting in a crib that's being cradled and rocked. That no matter what's going on around you, you're so comforted, you're so secure in your identity in Him and His ability to take care of any situation. Jesus, the disciples were fearing for their life. He was sleeping on a boat. Jesus said, we're going to the other side. Yes. Every single child of God, guess what? It doesn't matter how stormy your life gets, going you're going to the other side. There's a destination that is great. There's security that we can have that we should, should be building and basing our life on. Not on our physical accomplishments or, or my, my, my ability or my education. But should be founded on the rock. Yeah. We should be building on who Jesus Christ is. And he's in, he is the word. In the beginning. Before anything was ever done. And everything that happened that was made has passed through him. 
including you. We're going to get that to that too. Boop, boop. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. <clears throat> I'm sorry, y'all. This is one of those days where I'm way over prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we were out for a couple of weeks. I got so much stuff. No, we could just go for like we have a marathon right now. <laughs> At this point, it's not a matter what I what I can say. It's it's what I'm not going to say. <laughs> we just let the Holy Spirit lead. Amen. That's, what, that's how we roll around here. The word the word nothing nothing was created it is above and beyond. Nothing is above and beyond Christ. Anything that we trust or, or focus on more than His, more than Him, is a dis distraction or deception, mm -hmm. trying to detour our faith. I'm going to say that again. Yes. Anything that we focus on above and beyond Christ is a distraction and a deception in trying to detour our faith. So when I'm putting my trust in something more than I'm trusting God, when I'm faced with something and then I and I think, man, God, there is just no way this is gonna this is gonna work out. What what that thing is has has effectively got us off course and brought us into a place of darkness or ignorance of what God's capable of doing. It's effectively pulled us out of alignment with what God is doing in our life. Doesn't mean we're not loved, that God doesn't love us. It doesn't mean we're, that, but but we've been the, the the enemy when he kills, steals, and destroys, he does it by deception, by confusion, by playing on our emotions. Right? Emotions are real. We need to learn how to uh, feel emotions, but we can't let those emotions dictate our life. Right? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it, could not overcome it. The word uh, overcome or comprehend is too long for me to uh, pronounce, <laughs> but it's to seize, to lay hold of, to overcome. He cannot, the darkness cannot overcome the light of God. Amen. There's not even a, the, there's no struggle when we turn the light on. It's not like, oh, the darkness is like, oh, no, I'm not going to let it light up in here. There's a light inside of you that the only power that the darkness has is the power that we allow it. Mm. Mm. I mean, we didn't get it that time. I'm going to come at it another way. <laughs> There's a hedge of protection around you that the enemy cannot cross. The, the, the only way that, that that boundary, when we talked about boundaries on Thursday, the only way that that can be compromised is by us allowing the darkness in. That's why the enemy, he's got to confuse your, your identity. He's got to try to distract you from your purpose. He's got to try to confuse you, make you feel unworthy, incapable, unqualified. Rejected. And this goes on. <clears throat> and the light shines in the darkness, the darkness can overcome it. Jesus came to bring light, the light of the world. The, what, the, the word became flesh and he came to bring light to all men. Darkness represents deception, ignorance, unawareness, lack of sight or vision. <clears throat> Do you realize that, that there's a line being drawn? Everything that's happened last year and in this year too, darkness is being brought to light. Yes. Things are being exposed. Come on. We're seeing things. We're seeing what the genuine motivation behind. You can talk the greatest talk. You can say the, the oh, we're here for world peace and all these other things. But the genuine motivation is being revealed. And, and so it's up to us as, as children of God to see things for what they are yeah. and make correct, accurate 
decisions accordingly. The enemy of your soul wants to keep you ignorant of your God-given identity and purpose. If he can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> if he can't, can't, can't bring you into to, to genuinely opposing God, he'll distract you off your purpose. He'll bring you into a place where you're doing all these other things and, and you think that's your identity. That's your purpose. That's your reason for being created. Mm. Come on. Try to uh, distort the boundaries. In Jude 1, 6 through 8. And the angels who do not keep their positions of authority. Oh, wait, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm going to finish in John first. My bad. Y'all love me anyway, right? Yeah. The grace, right? The grace of God. Come on, give me some grace. I got it. The God of grace, right? I'm so glad I don't have to be perfect. I just have to love my Jesus, give it my best. Somebody needs to hear that right now. You don't have to be perfect. That's what I love about our church, this family. You don't have to be perfect. You have to be going in a direction. Loving God. God, will, will any one of you disown your kid because they fall down and scratch your knee when they're learning how to walk? No. Yeah. Yeah, it's Come on, baby. Let's get back up. Come on. You got it. Come on. Let's do this. Let's get it. Come on. You got this. Mm. Well, I wanted to talk about my snow trip yesterday. Um... <laughs> The light. <laughs> Verse 6. There was a man sent from God. That word sent is apostolo, apostle. You're apostle. Do you know that? God's sending you somewhere. God's got a purpose for you. That's a call for everyone. He said, Jesus said, He's just like I've been sent by the Father, I now send you. Yeah. He wasn't exactly. talking about just them. He was no. talking about you and you and you and you and you. He's, He's sending us to be the light. He's sending us to make a difference. Come on. We're sending us to, to have eternal value here in this dark world. The darker it gets, guess what? The brighter we're going to brighter we're going to shine. Yeah. This man came to witness for a witness to bear a witness of the light, and all through him might believe. He was not the light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world through him, and, and the world was made through him. The world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. I, I could ask for uh, 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 hands, but I know there will be every person in this place, and probably everybody watching too, who will experience rejection. God knows that rejection. He knows that pain. He knows what that feels like. But he also has given us the authority to overcome that. Hallelujah. In verse 12, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believed in him, in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. That word right, he gave them the right, is actually a word called exosia in the Greek. And it means the power. He's giving you the power, the, the authority, the jurisdiction, the ability. In other words, when I go somewhere, I'm not even going on my power. I used to think I had to be a tough guy. I had to dress a certain way. I had to walk and intimidate people. And, and if somebody said something, I'm going to make an example out of you so nobody else. Because I was operating actually in fear. Yeah. Now I don't operate in fear now. I operate in authority. Yeah. You know what authority looks so much different? Yeah. It's not aggressive. It's not loud. Authority is calm, security, stability. Yeah. You know that you know. That you know. Did you know that greater is he 
who's inside of me than anything that this world has to offer. That there's no demon in hell. No, no, nothing that, 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 ha that ha I'm standing. Where I'm standing, God's standing. Amen. The, the same authority that little David had. When faith, the whole army was like, we ain't got nothing to do with this thing. And little David was like, oh, you can keep that armor because I have authority. Amen. You're not, the intimidation is not going to make me, I'm not going to get all excited and, and be, be unstable. I'm going to move forward and I'm going to advance in authority. You don't have to be huge. If is when you know your authority, I love Gideon. One of my favorites. That, well, so much good stuff in the Word of God. But Gideon was a prime example. He didn't need. He didn't need the the, the, the tens of thousands. He didn't even need the thousands. He just needs a few that were willing to follow the Word, be committed, and walk in their authority. And God does the Word. It's not by power, not by might. Not by my physical anymore. It's by his spirit. Yeah. And so I know that anything that, that I'm up against, any opposition, has already been defeated by God. Yeah. Yeah. I have jurisdiction. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is bad. I might have to censor this up. I don't know if anybody ever have been uh, yeah. uh, investigated or yeah. um, approached by a feds. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to confirm or deny. I'm standing on the But it's a whole nother level. Yes, it is. You know why? Because it's not city and it's not county. Oh, that's they have complete jurisdiction. Oh, yeah. When they're coming after you, not that I would admit to this, but there will be helicopters and the, every, the SWAT teams and everything is under their control mm -hmm. and will be imposed upon you because of their jurisdiction. And we need to understand is as, as ominous as that is, yeah. and actually kind of scary, <laughs> it, we have a greater jurisdiction, a supernatural jurisdiction that comes from the, the almighty God, the one that we just read, created and formed and, and, and released everything into this world, created you, created them, created the situation, the one that supersedes all things, the almighty God, the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the Jehovah Rapha, the, the Jehovah Jireh, the one that has the ability, the El Elyon, the, the, the El Shaddai, he's got everything in his control, and we are a channel, we have an inheritance and we need to learn, get equipped, and walk in this kind of authority. I'm done being deceived. I'm done being tricked into thinking that I'm anything less than what God has created me to be. You know why I don't go to bars? You know why I don't have to drink? Because that's not who I am. I don't need that. I have jurisdiction. I have joy. We just had an amazing weekend. And I don't need to, to do anything to alter my mind anymore. I can have so much fun and enjoy life every single day. I can enjoy life at levels so far greater than anything I could ever do, uh, any kind of substance or any kind of mind-altering thing. What we have now is genuine and true. And when we grab a hold of that and say, no, that's not my identity. That's not my I don't need to make those decisions anymore. I'm walking in a God-given authority authority right now, and I don't want anything to deter me or distract me from what God has for my life. Yes. Somebody yes. say XLCO. Yes. Yes. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and he, we beheld his glory, the glory of the, of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. We need to stand on truth we need to stand for truth. We need to, to have truth bound around our, our, our waist, yes. holding everything else together. It's no longer an opinion. And I talked about this on Thursday. 
It's not about a political thing. It's not about an opinion. It's not about an emotion. It's not about what I think is right. It's either truth or it's a lie. And we need to stand for truth. If it's not light, it's not truth. And we need to be walking in that. And say, if this is going against the word of God, the truth of God's word, if I'm feeling a kind of way that goes against what God says I am or who I am or what I'm, uh, my purpose in life, I've got to eliminate that thing. I've got to, that, that's where our ignorance comes in. We get ignorant. Well, maybe it's okay if we, but I've heard people, what, can I do this and still be good with God? <laughs> Oh, I love this one. Only God can judge me. Wow. God is very holy. Yeah. And he's very righteous. You better watch what you say. And he loves us so much. But we need to be careful and know that he is a holy God. He's yes, he a is. righteous God. And he's a God of truth. And we need to be in alignment with that truth. And make the necessary adjustments in our life to grow. To grow. And none of us are perfect. But we don't want to give up ground. We want to grow and advance and move forward in the things that he has for his life, for our life. And he grants us, he just said right there, and John, I didn't say it, he said it, the word said it, that he's given us jurisdiction, he's given us authority. Amen. You don't want to come here to get discipled, to get trained up. The Bible calls it the equipping of the saints. That's why he released apostolic, prophetic, uh, uh, teaching and pastoring, all these different gifts, and they're all right here available to us to equip us to be able to operate in our authority, to operate in our in our identity. Yes, amen. Somebody say, equip me. Equip me. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> now, the angel, uh, Jude, in 1, 6 through 8, the angels who did not keep their position, keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling. These he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment till the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They served as an example for those who suffered the punishment of eternal fire. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies reject authority and heap abuse upon heavenly or supernatural beings. So, I don't want to leave my place of authority. I don't want to get out of alignment with what God is doing. That's the only reason we have authority. Because we have the Spirit of God living inside of us. It said, them that believe and receive. In other words, you not only just... That word belief has really been watered down in our society. Mm -hmm. it, well, there's certain words that, that, that do not do them justice anymore. And when we believe, not just believe that, that it's, he's real, but believe, that word means commitment, trusting. Mm -hmm. that we got to trust God that, that he is real and that his word is true. That's what belief is. A wholehearted trust. In the time, biblical times, if you believe and confess the name of the Lord, immediately as you made that confession, you are now a target or for potential abuse and persecution from the Roman Empire. Ooh, it was big. It was big time, Pastor Juan. It, it was. It was. It was big time. It wasn't like oh, I believe in God and tomorrow I'm gonna. Well, I don't know. No, it was trust, wholeheartedness. We don't, I don't want to leave that. They abandoned their proper dwelling place. And we're talking about the angels. And he has kept them in darkness. Darkness is ignorance. Darkness is, is where we're unaware. Darkness is, 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 is in a place of, of confusion. If I turn the lights off right now, we're, we're all not going to know how to, to walk through this building. Or, or when the light goes off in your life, you're disorientated. You know, you ever been in a place where it's so dark you can't even see your hand in front of your face? Yeah. You don't even know. If you had a mirror right there, you wouldn't even be able to see your reflection. You wouldn't even be able to know who you are. I lived in that kind of darkness for a long time. Now, I didn't even realize who I was, where I was going, what God had for my life. 
And God wants to, to break that darkness. But this is a, a spiritual realm. This is where demonic forces are. In that darkness. But we are children of light and of the day, the Bible says. Amen? Amen. So we need to walk in this awareness. We need to walk in his truth. We need to walk in his authority. Amen. Continuing to grow in it. And they, they served as an example. So, in other words, he's trying to show us something through this. These towns, Sodom and Gomorrah, the, the, the sexual, um, what did it say? Who was listening? They give themselves to immorality and perversion. Our world, our society is perverted, immoral. Matter of fact, immoral. I know when I grew up, you had like the Waltons, and you had, <laughs> <laughs> and you had yeah. the Father of Knows Best, yeah. yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And the worst thing that would happen when Beaver would break a window playing baseball or something, and, <laughs> and he would have to go work it off and get a job. And, gee, Beaver, gee, Wally. <laughs> <laughs> My point is, there's nothing moral even on our TVs. Right. Our kids are being fed all this stuff. Yeah. Our world is just filled with perversion. Now, when I'm in Africa, I love talking with the kids. They're so pure there. There's something so special there. They're not exposed to the movies and the violence and the gang and the perversion. And, and, just, and, and that word perversion is, is, is referring to sexual perversion, but it also means a distortion. Yeah. Distorting things, perverting the truth. Perverting our, our thoughts, our, our minds, our, our, our concept of reality. Basically, this word is truth. Anything that opposes this word is a perversion. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, that was good. That was good. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I got some from that one right there. <laughs> um, in the same way, um, they pollute their own bodies. And we're going to be talking. I just want to make a note of that. And in the future, we're going to talk more about pollution. We're not talking about cutting a tree. We're talking about polluting. Polluting ourselves. Polluting our, 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 our families. Polluting our society with things that are apart from God. In Isaiah 43, 5 and 8. Do not be afraid for I am with you. Bring your offspring to the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. For everyone who is called by my name, who I who I've created for my glory, whom I formed and made, bring out the people who have eyes but are blind and who have ears but are deaf. We're in a society right now of blind and deaf people. They were created for God's glory. But the enemy, the God of this age, has blinded their minds, completely disconnected them from the truth. And we need to, God is going to bring people in. We need to, we as a church, need to prepare ourselves. God, I know here, we're going to be organizing and getting things in order Getting ready, getting prepared, because God is going to, he says, he's going to bring them in. And it's not that God didn't love, doesn't love them and didn't create them, but they've just been blinded and their ears have been closed to the reality of what God has declared for them and about them. And we need to be prepared, ready, and equipped to help these people gain their identity, gain their perspective on what God has for their life. Give them the word of unadulterated word of truth. Uncompromised. We're not, this isn't at the donut shop. We're not here to, for fun and games. We're not here for entertainment. We're here to grow in our in the Lord. We're here to serve God. Guess what? If you're doing good in a relationship with God, come in here, get plugged in and help somebody else. Because if you're having a good day, guess what? You might have, if you're having a good day right now, you either just came out of a storm or you're going into one. Yes, you are. Take that good day and help somebody else. Because guess what? In a little bit, you're going to need somebody to help you. 
And that's what a family leader working together is all about, as the body of Christ. Amen. The enemy wants to keep you blind to your God-given identity, purpose, and authority. Now, this is cool. Psalms 139, verse 13 through 18. You made all, all the del delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. So, some of us have grown up in environments and at a very young age, we felt, we were told, we were, either we were told or we were made to feel like we were a mistake. We were, we were, could have been abandoned. You could have been rejected, could have been abused. The enemy is, is, is so ruthless that he will stop at nothing to pray on the, while you're being formed, while your mind's being formed in the early stages of your life to try to establish an authority or dominance, dominate your mind. And, and there's people here that have come to believe and think that you're a mistake. I, I used to say, man, I wish I had never born. I used to have told that. If we weren't even directly told that, a lot of us have felt that way. But God, and I want you, if that's you, I want you to mark this, write this scripture down, and I want you to read this scripture over and over and over. Amen. Because it was not a mistake. It was not passion. It was not physical. It was not an, uh, 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 even uh, abuse, uh, something that took place. It was God made you all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Yes. That, that while, while you were being assembled by God specifically, exactly the way you are, you don't need to get color contacts. You don't need to, to get a bunch of tattoos. You don't need to get plastic surgery. You don't need to change anything about you. God said, I'm the one that put you together the way I did. I put you together perfectly. I put you together purposely. I put you together specifically, exactly the way you are. You're perfect. You're perfect. Somebody say, I'm perfect. I don't need to change a thing. God loves me. And he's living inside of me. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. My soul knows them well. The enemy has distorted your mind to override your soul. You know what's amazing about those kids right in there? They'll believe God in a minute. You tell them about Jesus, and instantly they're like, yes, Jesus loves me. This I know. And they will grab a hold of that. We might think and see it as a nursery rhyme, but they will capture that. And because their soul has not been polluted, it hasn't been contaminated, their mind hasn't been distorted to a capacity where they can actually believe and have childlike faith. We need to learn something from those kids right now to begin to believe God like nothing ever happened in our life. Jesus. Amen. Fearfully and wonderfully made. My soul knows it well. You know, the Bible says a fool is said in his heart, there is no God. And we're lying to ourselves if we say that God doesn't exist. The Bible says that eternity has been written on every one of our hearts. The reality of who God is. That even the stars testify of him. And if we just open up and let the Spirit of God, I have mean, heard people say, well, what about deep Africa where, where nobody's ever talked to them? Well, guess what? They looked up in the stars and they got put His Spirit inside of them. He put that revelation of eternity inside of them. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. I was, when, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. <clears throat> Every day of my life was recorded in the dark, as I was being woven together in the dark of the room. There's something that takes place that science has caught up to. 
When Jesus said he was there through this word, do you know that science has, has, has proven and has actually filmed? Look it up on YouTube if you don't believe me. We well, you know YouTube doesn't lie. <laughs> no, but, but, but read the research this if you want. Yeah. It's called a zinc burst. Yeah. And this zinc burst is a burst of light that takes place inside a woman's womb when conception takes place. There, there is a physical light that they've now been able to record that at the moment of conception, poof, there's light. Mm. Poof, God's there. Poof, he was there. It's just proof. I love when science catches up to the word of God. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, they could have just looked here and, and they would have kind of, you know, figured some of this stuff out, but let them do it the way they want. But they're actually proving it. You can actually see it. That light was there. While you, while you were being formed, put together. It wasn't, remember what he said in, in John? They were not from, born from passion or pleasure, but, but through the spirit. That there was something that took place, a supernatural move. That this is why the sanctity of life is so important. Because it wasn't my choice. It wasn't my when that conception takes place, that is God there initiating, conducting, putting together that life. And we, no person, has the right to take it. My point was <laughs> that you weren't alone even as you were in your mother's womb. In Psalms 139, that God was there with you, connecting the dots, weaving you together. Piece by piece. Isn't that reassuring? Mm -hmm. yes. And then every moment, every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They can't be numbered. I've heard this so many times. And this is another great tactic of the enemy. And once again, we're talking about spiritual warfare. Where does spiritual warfare take place? In the mind. Right here between our ears. And if the enemy can convince you that you are a mistake, if he can convince you that you're unworthy, if he can convince you that you've uh, 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 failed God, I've heard this so many times. I've heard people, I think God is mad at me. I've made some mistakes. I've done some things that I don't think God wants to hear my voice. I don't think God loves me. I've, I've done too much. And this right here, once, I would recommend this for the next week. Read Psalms 139. Oh my God. Between verses 13 and 18. It's a great song. And, 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 and every day of my life, when I drew my first breath, when I draw my last breath, everything has already not just been known, but already been written down. God is not surprised. God is not disappointed. God is not wondering what you're going to do next. It, it, there is no disappointing God. His love for you is immeasurable, infinite, unconditional, always there. The Bible says that nothing, no demon in hell, no, no person no sin, can separate us from that love. In other words, that love is the same love that pursued me when I was at my worst. He was in his best. That love did not cease to come after me or you. Even from the moment I was conceived all through my life, people might have rejected you. People might have abused you. People might have abandoned you. But God never did. His love continued to pursue you. He didn't care where you were, what you were going through. He proved that out of the way. He said, no, no, that's how I'm getting it down. That was mine. I love them. I'm waiting. There's going to be a day where they're going to open their heart and I'm going to come into their life and I'm going to show them who they really are. I don't have to try to become something. It's already inside of me and it's His Spirit. It's nothing that I can accomplish anyways. Yes. Oh. There's no disappointing Him. How precious are your thoughts about me? 
You ever felt forgotten about? Rejected? Somebody's written you off? It wasn't God. His heart, his mind, his thoughts, his eye, his hand, his power, everything is for you. God is never trying to take something out of your life that will hurt you or be harmful to you. All he's trying to do is bring into your life the awareness of his goodness, of his power, of his love, of his glory, of his purpose, of his potential, of who he is. He wants to bring us to a greater level of awareness of his presence. You know, you know why there's so many things that are trying to distract us from that? That's where my authority comes from. If God is for me, who can be against me? You come at me with Jabber and his spirit, but I come at you in the name of the heavens. Oh, he's going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Glory. No, Glory. Lord. A zinc burst is light that is visible from a moment of conception. It was not luck, chance, or random selection, but the Lord appointing a special and specific process to take place so that he could release a blessing upon the earth in the form and the likeness of his very image. You. You're made in his image. You're made in his image. I'm made in his image. His likeness. His glory living inside of me. His presence. Woo, Lord. This is the very foundation that drives that drives your adversary, the devil, into a frenzy. He has launched an all-out assault upon anything that's created to give God pleasure and to carry his glory, to reflect his image, life, spirit, and truth. That is why he preys on the vulnerable, the young and the weak. We're going to pick this up next week. Yeah. I'll just give it we need to begin to see ourselves as God sees us. We need to understand what we were created to be and what we were created to do. When I understand, when I get a deeper revelation of who God created me to be, I know what I'm supposed to do. I know that there's a light shining inside of me. And that light is where the victory is. No more deception. No more lies. Amen. Silence the voices. God, silence the voices, Lord. The, the voice of the enemy, Lord. Shut his mouth, God. Every voice is telling us that we're unworthy. We're not enough. Nobody could love us. You've gone too far. God doesn't want anything to do with you. All these lies, Lord God, that the enemy is perpetuating in this atmosphere and in the hearts and the lives of those who are called by God, appointed by God, purposed by God, anointed by God. Father, that resistance, Lord, is, is evidence of our potential and purpose that you've created us for. I thank you, God, that you know the plans for us to give us a future and a hope not to harm us, Lord God. You're constantly trying to bring us in alignment with your kingdom, Lord. I ask God that we would be kingdom minded, not, not politically minded and not, not nationally minded and not racially minded, but kingdom minded. There's only one race, Lord God, and we are your children and we're going to continue to stand united with each other, united within your presence, Lord God, with you and the center. You're the one that's in charge, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that there's not a mistake. There, no person that is here is a mistake. And I declare, God, that your truth will begin to rule and reign in our life, Lord God. The authority and dominion, you've given us dominion over the whole earth, Lord God. Anything that is physical, you've given us dominion over it. Some of us have surrendered our authority to physical urges. God, help us to reclaim your God-given authority in those areas. Some of us have submitted authority to inclinations and urges and 
things that, that have been perverted and distorted in our life. God, bring a clarity of your truth, of your righteousness, Lord. I thank you, God, that we're not going to seek and, and focus on the physical things, that we're going to seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and every material, every physical thing that we need is going to be added. I thank you, God, that you've given us everything we need pertaining to a life of godliness. It's already inside of us, Lord. Bring, raise our awareness, Lord, to what you've given us and who we are and how we can become so intimately and intricately connected with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.